I'm 25 years old. The biggest challenge of my generation is fighting climate change. We know we have to change our habits. We talk a lot about eating organic food, riding bikes, consuming differently. But we don't talk so much about buildings, about where we live and where we work. And that's crazy when you know how much of an impact it has on the environment. Buildings use 50% of natural resources and produce 25% of CO2 emissions. Buildings are being made the same way for 50 years. We all have realized that our planet was in danger. I mean, almost all. But it's as if the construction industry didn't get the memo. We need a building revolution. Enough talking about problems. We need solutions. After graduation, I decided to go into politics, working for the deputy mayor of Paris in charge of architecture and planning. We decided to change the world of the game in Paris. That's what we did. Okay, we didn't actually turn the Eiffel Tower, but we launched a big competition called Reinventing Paris. We proposed to worldwide teams to build differently and better in Paris. The rule was simple. We proposed 23 sites, and on each of those sites, the best project would win the site. It had a huge success. It was a little revolution for Paris and a big revolution for me, because I understood how buildings can be radically different, can be good for the environment, good for people. So tonight, I want to share with you the projects that have moved me, that have changed my vision of architecture. And through those projects, I want to share with you new rules for architecture. Let's start with rule number one. Change the recipe. This is one of my favorite winning projects from this competition. It is a tower made of wood built close to an old railway station. It is both a food market, an urban farm, and also a housing unit for chefs. What I really love about that building is how wood makes it feel beautiful and special. It fits so well with our patrimony and with what is actually inside that building. It made me think about what materials we actually use in our buildings. This is Michael Green. Michael is a Canadian architect. He builds only in wood. Tall buildings, smaller ones. When I first met Michael, I was with my grandmother, and she asked him, why building in wood? He said, think of buildings as food. You should know every ingredient that is in it, and it should be healthy. Wood is a healthy ingredient. It doesn't harm the planet. Unfortunately, in most countries, concrete is preferred to wood. For me, concrete is like fast food architecture. Nobody knows the ingredients, and it makes the planet sick. Well, obviously, it's cheap, you're not hungry for a while, but you don't eat fast food every day. Well, it should be the same with concrete. Concrete was a great material, but for the 20th century. Concrete is the most consumed human-made material on Earth. It is made of sand, water, cement, mainly. Sand is a finite resource. It is disappearing, along with beaches and islands. Cement is responsible of more than 5% of CO2 emissions worldwide. So what if we replaced concrete and steel with local and biosource materials, like wood, like straw, like mud bricks? It would launch a new economy. It would employ thousands of people, and it would made, make our buildings more healthy. Rule number two. Buildings should create ecosystems. This is another winning project. It's called Thousand Trees. This building made me realize 
that buildings can create ecosystems rather than killing them. It is both a building and also a forest. It will be a new sanctuary for biodiversity for birds. It made me think about one of my favorite books, Silent Spring by Rachel Carson. In her book, Rachel Carson imagines a spring that would have become silent because all birds died of pesticides. In our cities, building sometimes consists in replacing nature with dead materials. So thanks to Thousand Trees, now I know that buildings can bring more birds to the city and create ecosystems. Rule number three. Use what's already there. This is the Tour Montparnasse. It's a very important building for Paris. Personally, I used to hate it. I found it too dark, too ugly, too old. We launched a competition with the owners of the tower. The winning project made me realize that the tower could be magnified while keeping most of it. Its shape, its history, its materials. In the future project, all the glass from the facade will be reused in the interior design. I understood the value of what's already there. And that's why this project is great. We must know the value of each material. Conserving is the first ecological choice. Every year, we demolish too many buildings that could be maintained. In my country, France, we produce every year 42 tons of waste that come from construction sites. This is too much. We could reuse all those materials. It could create millions of jobs, and it could make buildings more original and more authentic. Rule number four. Buildings should feed the city. This is the last winning project I want to share with you. It's a participatory housing project and an urban farm. The people will be able to design their apartments and their shared garden. Urban agriculture is not a detail. It can foster a community like this one. It can change people's life. And that's why we are developing it massively in Paris. This is a farm on the roof of a nursing home. This is the roof of a luxury hotel close to the Eiffel Tower. And soon, we will open the biggest farm of Paris, on 7,000 square meters. Every year, it will produce 52 tons of salads, herbs, flowers, that will be delivered to the local supermarkets for the Parisian people. Urban agriculture is a game-changer for architecture, because it brings back nature to the city. My city is very dense. We don't have enough space on ground. So let's do it on buildings. Let's transform every roof into a garden. This is not only happening in Paris. It can happen anywhere. This is Brooklyn Grange, an urban farm in New York City. I visited it four years ago, and it changed my vision of New York City because I understood the possibilities that can be done in such a city. And people love it so much that they are even getting married on it. This is Tempelhof here in Berlin, a former airport. It was supposed to be urbanized, but the people from Berlin said they wanted a park, and now they have the greatest park ever. This brings me to my last rule. Speak up. Construction industry is one of the least innovative and productive industries in the world, but it doesn't have to be. You can say where you want or don't want to live. You can ask for what is inside your building, and you can ask your mayor to change the, way, the rules of the game. And through that, you can have a real impact on climate change. <laughs>